Hi, um, my name is Geraldine Pratt. Thanks um, to the KDOCS Film Festival for asking me to say a few words before the film overseas. I'm on faculty in the Geography Department at UBC, the University of British Columbia, and I've done um, research for many years to document the lives of Filipino caregivers who come to Canada to take care of Canadian children, Canadian seniors, and others who need care in their home. I've always done this research in collaboration with Filipino organizations in Vancouver and um, to a lesser extent Manila. The work of these and other Filipino organizations, uh, the work that they do fits perfectly within the themes of this year's festival, resistance, freedom, justice. I want to both acknowledge and honor these collaborations um, over the last 26 years or so. Um, the first collaboration was with the Philippine Women's Center of BC. Um, the Philippine Women's Center of BC, PWC, has been organizing Filipino caregivers in BC since, um, since 1986, so for 35 years. Magrante BC was formed in 2000 and it's affiliated with Magrante International which is a global alliance of over 200 Filipino organizations active in more than 23 countries. And finally, I'm currently collaborating with the Migrant Workers Center, formerly the, um, the West Coast Domestic Workers Association, and um, we're collaborating on a study of the lives of migrant workers during the pandemic. The film Overseas takes place for the most part in the Visayas region of the Philippines at a training center for migrant domestic workers. It's a film that really speaks for itself. It doesn't need an introduction, but I would like to contextualize it in a couple of ways. First, the film makes clear that OFWs or overseas Filipino workers are big business for the Philippine government. One in 10 citizens of the Philippines works as an OFW, and more than half of OFWs are women, the majority working as domestic workers, like the women shown in the film, and many, like the women shown in this film, leave their children behind to care for children in wealthier countries. This is what um, the sociologist Arlie Hochschild has called the global care chain or the global heart transplant. Remittances sent home by these workers amounted to 33.5 billion US dollars in 2019, which is like a ridiculous sum to get your head around. But another way of, um, another way of thinking about it is that amounts to 11% of the GDP of the Philippines. You get a sense of the magnitude of this, um, this, this labor export trade in the final scenes of, of, the, of the film, when the camera, um, now at a government agency in, in Manila, lingers over piles and piles and piles of, of paperwork of OFWs, the papers um, 
bundled into um, these bundles um, labeled by country and, and date of visa and the fact that they're sort of strewn or, 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 or sort of they seem almost discarded in the hallway is um, kind of doubly poignant. The women shown in this film are part of this labor export industry. Um, we learn that they're going to countries in the Middle East, um, Dubai, Saudi, um, and in East Asia, um, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Canada is nowhere in sight in this film. And I think viewing this film in Canada, you might think that the training school has nothing to do with Canada. Well, let me tell you, we are equally culpable. The scene of the woman leaving her sleeping toddler to go work overseas, not to go around the corner for milk, but, but not to return for years. That's a scenario that's been described to me in Vancouver many times by mothers and also by their children, children who were just bewildered when they awoke to find that their mothers were gone for years. Canada has had um, various immigration programs in place to bring women here to care for us as live-in uh, foreign domestic workers. Since 1992, most of, of um, these women have come from the Philippines. From 1992 to 2014, they came through a temporary work visa program called the Live-In Caregiver Program, or the LCP. At its height, 14,000 Filipino women, 14,000, came to that program annually with the possibility of applying for permanent resident status after completing 24 months as living caregivers. And at that point, they could sponsor their families to join them in Canada. But the research that I did with the Philippine Women's Center, the PWC, showed that it took way longer, in fact, to bring their families here. And in fact, eight years of family separation was, was the norm. The change to the LCP in 2014 came, not in the first instance, from a concern about the injustice of this state-mandated pattern of family separation, but from a concern that the program was being misused by Filipino families for the purpose of family reunification. Since that time, the program has been rethought a number of times, and a new version of the caregiver program, as it's now called, was launched in June of 2019, which did introduce some of the changes that migrant organizations have fought for for a really long time, including the possibility of bringing one's family from the get-go. Whether justice has been won, we'll see, and we'll have to watch closely. But don't forget for a minute that Canada is bound up in the film that you're about to view. Um, so just to end off sounding very much like a, an academic, the fact that Canada is the seventh most important source of remittances to the Philippines tells the story of our entwined histories, including entwined histories of culpability and accountability. Um, so I'm not sure that this is the right verb, but do enjoy the film. It's a, a really a wonderful, profoundly, profoundly disturbing film.